All right, today is the day and we are going to be talking Leviathan today and we're going to be talking about Leviathan styling because we are going to do a little exercise, a little trip into aerodynamic analysis. Now, you probably noticed that a uh, Leviathan is a little bit different than the average uh, overlanding truck, the big boxy um, uh, Unibog, man, those kind of trucks. They're very big and boxy and Leviathan has a lot of a different styling in it. Now, I would say the styling is kind of derived from the 1980s sci-fi trend in that wedgie nose-shaped vehicles. Um, Ark, um, Damnation Alley, what was it? Uh, the Landmaster, I guess it was called, the Damnation Alley. Anyway, all those sci-fi things. And that lineage is kind of carried through by David Levy when he created his uh, models for his design for the movie Prometheus. And when I saw some of those, it kind of solved... Some of the problems I was having in designing a nose that could have both a water pushing hole in the front and having that cab forward look. And so after talking with David, um, he thought it would also be interesting to see his uh, creations be constructed again. They built a couple of things similar to this in the movie, like I said, movie Prometheus. If you want to go see what we're talking about, where this kind of design styling has come to. Anyway, today we're actually going to be looking at doing an aerodynamic analysis of it. I've gone to a uh, website called AirShaper. This is an app you can go to online and they will do aerodynamic analysis. Now the founder of that company is a, guy, a gentleman named Wooter and he is going to be taking and going through and doing, helping us actually. Now the app online is actually fully self-functioning. You can go in there put your model in, do the analysis, the computer system does all the analysis for you. You don't have to have any interaction with people. But in our case, we're actually working with AirShaper and they are gonna take it and look, do the analysis for us and kind of talk us through some of those things. Now, I'm not gonna be doing a really in-depth analysis here on this video, but I'm gonna put a link at the end of the video and then also down in the description where you can go and connect to another video that will be created by AirShaper and they will take you through the full analysis if you're interested in understanding the aerodynamics and how the AirShaper product works. Anyway, so you can understand what we're talking about. Let's just jump in, take a look. Now to get one of these analyses done, you have to have a 3D model created. And we have this model that was built for me by another YouTuber named, goes by UnityFan. He originally had come and uh, done a model of the Arate supercar but that model is not completely far enough along to actually do analysis on it, so we did want to see what we could do with Leviathan. Once you have that model and you can convert it to an SDL file, it's a simple drag and drop from your computer into the software online. And then it'll jump you in and start asking you a bunch of questions to set up all the parameters that are needed for it to do its calculations. Things like the scale of the vehicle or whatever you're going to be anal analyzing. It does not have to even be a vehicle and whether you want the surface to be moving underneath it as if it was a road and other factors that are just going to say set up the parameters so that it knows what to do calculations around. Now the next thing it's going to do is going to take you to a page where you're going to choose what type of analysis is going to be done. And what we have here is kind of a, a mix of the advanced system because we're going to have the founder of this company, Wooter, actually go through with us. Then we have the meshed model. So what we do when we run a simulation is we create our own mesh. So your 3D file has a certain mesh when it, it's exported to STL, but we remesh that with, with what is called a volume mesh and the surface mesh to capture the details. So whichever you detail you see uh, on these renders was actually included in the mesh. So that means even the small grills uh, and so on, um, the, the, the marks on the tires, they were actually included in the computation. So one of the first things you're going to get in your output is just a simple batch of numbers that show the basic calculations have come up with like your drag coefficient and those type of things. But of course, there's much more in-depth stuff to come on these things. We calculate the frontal surface area. And of course, this is, this is a big truck, a big vehicle. So 6.5 square meters is a lot uh, for a vehicle compared to a car, which is maybe, let's say, order of magnitude two or something. We calculate the drag coefficient which is 0 0.5 in this case, uh, which of course for a car is is not good at all, uh, but for a truck is, is actually quite good. So it depends on, on, on your perspective. And then we show all kinds of visualizations uh, in the report to help you understand what the flow is like. Um, so I'll close the report 
as in 3D. So the first one is what we call 3D pressure clouds, which is where the um, red clouds represent an, a 3D ISO surface um, or a 3D surface representing the air that you're dragging along, uh, where you're generating actually um, aerodynamic drag. Now on this video conference, I didn't have a lot of time to put all that into this video, so I'm going to jump through some of the other things it'll do. It does surface pressure and surface frictions. It'll actually do an analysis, show you that in vertical streamlines and also in horizontal streamlines. And then one of the most interesting ones to me was analysis then to show you the noise that is created from these problems. The truck is a uh, utilitarian, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But of course you want to fix it so that it's not just such a, a brick going down the road. And of course there's some styling things that have jumped into it. So what was interesting about your, your, your analysis is uh, I want to be able to at least get better mileage when you're on the highway. The utilitarian thing, like you said, comes totally into play when you're off road because that's where the big tires, the big wheel wells and all that drag is really occurring. But there are a few places that I've seen in the analysis that like, okay, maybe I could do something there. And let me just ask you a couple of them. Like we'll call one of them the side nose. Yeah. There's a, or at least I'm looking at things that I think I could actually solve. So on the, on the nose of it, we have that big high pressure area. <clears throat> and then the, the drag that comes off more along the sides than anywhere else. It's splitting and flowing pretty smoothly off the top and off the bottom. But on the yep. sides, right below the doors, it's like forcing some air to go into a bordus kind of slightly oh, down. You mean this part? Yeah. Yep. So yep. now one thing that I'm dealing with though too is uh, the whole cap of this thing is constructed by just sheet metal being bent on a big brake, and it's fairly heavy aluminum. Okay. So it, it does have hard bends, but I'm wondering if I could add like vortex generators or something that will just try to control that air a little more. And it's, 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 yeah. it's, it doesn't seem to be one of the biggest points of drag, but when you switch over to your, your noise video, the picture it's also one of the biggest noise creators and that's right at the front where all that noise is going to translate right into the cab yes whereas noise behind it you know is is as they say it's well that's behind me <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i'm wondering if uh i can create something there to uh either redirect that kind of put it in a little more laminar flow somehow um so the best thing here um, I, know, I know it's maybe not feasible, um, but the best thing here, if you look at the top view, this corner is just very, very sharp. So if you could uh, make an extra cut like this, like take take, take the, the corner off so you have two smaller edges or two, two smaller uh, angles or bigger angles, depending on how you want to see it, um, that could actually um, improve it a lot. So if I just copy this um, and, and then put this in, paint trusty paint um then what you could do is um just make a cut like this um and then continue the rest of the profile so if you could do it like this that would already change a lot in terms of aerodynamics modifying the actual geometry would be preferred over working with vortex generators um, of course it's not always easy um, this one is also a very sharp one and and this flat face here might also disturb the flow a bit but uh, yeah now it's partially hidden because it's already into a vortex um but yeah changing the corner would be the best option there if that's still possible but that wasn't actually possible because this corner here although we could trim off the corner if you look around the back side there is some structural tubing in there that wouldn't allow us to cut off very much and the other one of course is at the very rear when it's coming off of that slope i've already corrected that top sharp drop, that yep. one there, I rounded yep. it out okay. in the model. Okay. But when it comes down, it's still a lot of that a pressure cloud is lifting up rather than being forced down towards the ground. Yeah. 
yeah. which is something that would probably improve it too. Yeah, so so if you add a round, then your separation will be postponed a bit, which might be nice. Um, still, it's a very steep angle for the air to follow. Um, and you also have air, if you look at the top view, um, like this. The air is also trying to curve inward. So it flows alongside this middle tunnel um, and then tries to curve inward. And as it curves inward, it needs to jump this edge. You see, and that's why you have this area of flow separation. Um, so if you could make this one rounded or a bit more. Yeah, is, this whole area is a much different story because from the cab back, this is all going to be composite. Okay. And okay. it's going to be created out of foam, foam sheets, and I can carve that foam and get much smoother transitions. And then it's going to be okay. fiberglass over there. Okay. So in that case, yeah, rounds would be really nice. But of course, the monster in the closet is the drag coming off of the tires. And of course, not a lot we can do about that. We can't push our vehicle down. So here's what the analysis shows us, what we're going to try to attempt to change. This is our new model that we input. We're going to call this Leviathan version 2. And we've done a few things on here that are really going to cut away some of the things we just talked about. The first pack, we rounded off that transition in the back so it slopes down much more gradually. And of course, the same thing here in the front. In fact, that front one, gradual enough that it tapers across onto the windshield. And then we have uh, the problem with drag off the rear completely. And that's going to have to just be uh, kind of accepted a little bit. The next thing we did, we put these little boots or these little uh, kick downs on the front of that hole there that it's going to push away from the tires. And then, of course, that front nose has always been the problem that we're working against. Now here's what the analysis showed in the noise department. By pushing the door all the way to the front and making that transition not so sharp, we got rid of that whole noise factor going across the door. In the end, we also had uh, Air Shaper do an analysis on a boxy old looking overlanding truck and you can see that the pressure cloud pretty much consumes the whole thing. Part of this, of course, is this thing has a lot of appendages sticking out, mirrors and air conditioners and things like that, which really wreak havoc on any kind of aerodynamics. But this is what, uh, you see, we do have pretty good aerodynamic properties according to what we have compared to this big old boxy truck. Same thing you see in the analysis showing where all the pressure points are and where the turbulence is created on all these flat surfaces as they bounce around and go around the vehicle. And of course, my worst fear of all these is the noise. Well, I think that's pretty interesting to see some of the changes that actually took place in the model. Not a drastic change from the two different versions of it, but very interesting, isn't it? How much air more aerodynamics having a smaller frontal area and that pointy nose has given the model. Anyway, we are about to move forward and start building some of the structure of the cabin on that truck. And so all that form and function that you've just seen in the model and the aerodynamics analysis is going to be coming to life in the actual building of that whole big shell. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Like I said, make sure you jump down to the link in the bottom if you want to go see that video, or I'll just put a card up here right about now that you can jump over and see Air Shaper's version of this video in the more technical analysis. Thanks for stopping by.